just for clarification, when you're cutting out something that's in a grid, don't try and cut out squares by doing that and then across, because some of you might think, you know, in the way your minds work, you might think that's what to do. Easiest thing in the world, just cut nice and straight from one side across to the other, so that you get strips, okay? Nice, long, slow cuts like this, deep into the jaws of the scissors and then smoothly down. Okay, once you have your strips, don't forget you'll probably end up with little bits at the edges, depending on, um, depending on the size of paper that you did this on, you know. But you can work it out, so just turn it into strips like this. There we go, that's me got my strips, and I should have five strips, because of course I made four centimetre uh, columns, okay, one, two, three, four, five. And then obviously you're just going to chop your squares from there. You want to make them as neat as you can, or the next step is going to be a little bit difficult. So now what we've got are lots of little squares. Um, I can't quite fit them all into the frame of the video, but you can see lots of squares and a blank piece of paper. And what we're going to do now is rearrange the drawing so that it looks like something brand new. Now obviously it's going to work well with interesting bits, but it's not going to work well with like completely blank bits. So any bits that were completely blank, I'm just going to get rid of and just not use. Now if you've got Pritt stick or some sort of glue, it will be a lot easier to sort of arrange them and stick them down. But of course you need to think, should I stick it now or should I arrange a few things first and figure out what I think looks best? So it's all about you being able to make sort of aesthetic decisions about what you think looks interesting and what you think looks boring. And if you think it looks boring, don't stick it down. So I'm going to begin with quite a complicated one. A bit of glue on the back, I'm going to stick it in the middle. Now obviously the sticking, you need to try to make sure that you do it um, so that the edges of the square are parallel to the edges of the paper. If we stuck that down at an angle there, it's going to be more difficult for us to work the piece. Then choose yourself another picture and say to yourself, or when I say picture, I mean square, what would that be like if I joined it on here or joined it on like that or like this or like this? I can't remember how um, it was originally. Maybe it was part of this before, don't know. So you just move it around until you think, oh, that's quite interesting. I think I'll just put it there. A little dot of glue on the back and put it down. Now, if you don't have print stick, you can still do this, but you just need to do it on a flat surface. My desk is slightly tilted up. So obviously I can't position them, they'll just slide down. But that's for the video. You can easily get a flat surface on the floor or on a desk and you can rearrange them so that they're kind of in a new position. Okay, you can even put tiny dots of blue tack or something on the back. Okay, so choose the most interesting ones and think to yourself how, you know, what happens when you align something up. That looks like it came from there originally because so, it matches up. See how it matches up perfectly? So maybe change it around a bit and see if we can invent something new. Now you may be wondering, what's the point of this? Well, the point of this is for you to get used to an image of something which is representational. So it was originally a representative drawing of an insect and we're going to change it into something which has insectiness to it. It has an, an insect feel, but is not the same as the original drawing. And that means if we were to then take that further, we could use it in design. To design something, it could be, gosh, it could be all kinds of things. We could use it to design um, like a sort of textile design, a repeat a sort of pattern or some kind of designed pattern for a textile design. Or it could be used for um, some sort of 
logo or something to do with insects or it could be taken into a three-dimensional design project whereby you might design um, like a part of a mask or a hat or something or a piece of jewellery which would have an insect sort of feel to it but it wouldn't be quite as obvious as what you would say would be you know just copying an insect and turning that into a um, necklace you know we want to try and make it a little bit more unusual a bit more different a bit more your own because what's happening here is you're turning something from being an original drawing into your imaginative interpretation yeah and the way you would do it may be completely different to how someone else would do it and that's what makes it yours and that's what makes it creative and that's what makes it special for you okay all right so you don't have to use absolutely every single one of your squares if you're putting these down and thinking mm, that's not really adding anything to it or whatever then you might want to leave some of them off but i want you to think about and what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to join all this together in another drawing okay we're going to make another drawing so you're understanding the process but Think about different things that this needs to be like. It wouldn't make sense to have a big white hole here and then another piece over here. You need to attach the various lines together to create something new in the middle. Okay. Okay, so I'm nearly finished with this. I think I'll just pop this one here and I've got maybe I've got one, two, three spaces. So I think what I might do is just finish this off with the three most interesting ones I can find. How about maybe that? Yeah, quite like that. That kind of curves. Ah, that works well because it seems to join on to here. And then my last one. Believe it or not, I am trying to do this as fast as I can. <laughs> but you need to see the thing from start to finish for it to make sense. There we go. Okay, finished. And now I'm just going to pause this and I'll show you what to do next in a sec. So what we do now is we look at what we've got here and we reinterpret it over here. So we join up lines maybe add in a few imaginary lines if we need to to try to create a bit of continuity between the shapes so i'm going to draw over here and i'm going to slightly enlarge it as well so that you can see what i'm doing I mean, up here and over and this scoops down comes over here goes off and then you could sort of say that joins on a little bit with that one over there So that's me done a little bit of shading on the finished drawing. The shading's completely imaginary, you just make it up, you can see how you can make something look three dimensional by adding a shadow, leaving a highlight and then grading the tone through from very dark through to very light. It's all down to just, it's what I talked about with the insect drawing before, it's down to how much time you're willing to put into something to make it look the best that you possibly can make it look. So, you know, I could just leave that like that, or I could work into it even more. I could put in a really dark background all the way around the whole thing so the piece really jumped out. I could add some colour if I wanted to. If you have coloured pencil at home, feel free to work some coloured pencil into it if you want to. But I understand that a lot of people might not have that, so they can't. And even if you do have it, you don't have to. You can make this just a tonal drawing if you want to, like mine. Um, but you want to try and spend the proper amount of time on it. So 
you know, you should be aiming for what you would normally do in school, which is roughly, you know, two sets of 45 minutes or whatever. Um, and you can check in with me at any point at which you feel you need to if you want to have um, some advice. Well, during those two periods, you know, on your timetable that you um, allocated to art, you can get in touch with me to get a little bit of help if you want. OK. There we go. So I could go on with this forever, but it's a hot sunny day and I've... Uh, Got lots of other stuff I have to go and get ready for my hires, etc. So I'm going to say goodbye. And there's the finished drawing. Enjoy it. <laughs>